<laughs> Here we go. Starting yeah. with the laughter. Starting so, with the yeah. Welcome. So I, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to How to Be Friends with Dave and Sean. Starting out with the giggle re because of course this is the show actually about how to be friends. It is not a step by step how to. It is like examples. So we we were having fun before we got started. Let's get to the point. Hi, Sean. Hi, Dave. How you doing? I'm okay. My sinuses are stuffy. What? And and have you identified clearly why they're stuffy? Well, one, my sinuses are always stuffy. But two, as I was discussing with you before, you ever notice when you're talking to a fat person on the phone, you can tell they're fat? And I'm pretty sure that if they're carrying extra weight, it affects their sinuses and their ability to breathe. I, um, you know what? <laughs> Okay, so you and I were also... And I say having... this as a fat person. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not ripping right. on fat people. I am I'm very overweight. So I recognize it in myself. I'm like, I sound like a fat person. You can get away with it. I, right. it it's, it's one of those things. It's your culture. Uh, <laughs> let me... Okay, so... And, and to that point, you and I had a, a, just a little back and forth on the notes for this week's podcast by the you way speak back and forth you submitted notes that i have no interest in but this is a part of friendship yes and friends don't necessarily like the things that other friends like yes and and i wholeheartedly support you in what you want to talk about this week i, I would go so, so far... burn out on this bs i could okay. care less hang on a second okay so <laughs> first off <laughs> yes to everything you're saying um secondly <laughs> You you don't wholeheartedly support me. You inappropriately support me. It's wonderful. And in an, in in a tertiary manner, if you say something that I don't agree with, and I say something that you don't agree with, then we by default double our our listenership. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Okay. And and just just real quick, totally unrelated. I'm going to burn down a future uh, sponsor potentially. Because Canada Dry, this is this is what I'm drinking. This is my water. This is Canada Dry fa- Mandarin Orange. Okay, stop it. Don't make anything other than ginger ale. This stuff is terrible. I'm just trying to drink it up because I don't want to waste my 98 cents spent at Winco on a fizzy water. I got my Costco membership water. Yeah, so um, to the point of actual not real sponsor then. Today's episode is sponsored by... Hedgehogs protecting us with laser laser trumpets. You don't know the war that is going on being waged by hedgehogs with laser trumpets. You look a little bit confused. There will be a link in the description that will explain everything. Uh, That is what I will leave that to. I call hedgehogs spicy mice. That's spicy (laughs) mice. Spicy mice. Spec. Spectacular. Um, okay, so in that theme as well, we do have uh, an actually pretty good fan question. And, our be- and by fan question, I mean my dad question. Yes. That, that didn't get answered in the last uh, couple was of times. Was it on the notes in the last one? I don't know when it was. So I think he sent it in with his pile of questions, and I just think we didn't get around to it. Now, I, I had a take that I sent to old Lieutenant Colonel Sutherland um, some time ago. Sean, yes. should I put solar panels on my house? I don't think there's anything wrong with putting solar panels on your house. I mean, it's 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 one of those things. That it's going to take a very long time for that investment to pay for itself. Mm-hmm. But people spend $60,000 on SUVs and then get a new one three years later. Like, I think it's just one of those things. You do you. I don't think you're going to hurt anything. But sure. like me personally, I, there's better things I could spend my money on. Yeah. Um, so uh, what I discussed with my old dad was that just, just like you're saying, the reality is the economically solar panels will never pan out, period. And, and that's true for... In not, your home, not at the current efficiency. No, thank you. We would need a quantum leap to get there, right? Yes, a- yes. and that's true for home or government, right? Uh, and the same remains true for the environment. If you're doing it for the environment, it is also not a net positive. Okay? You're probably better off spending that money 
on updating any of the antiquated appliances in your home that are more energy efficient. If you want to save the environment. So I'm just eliminating those two so we can get to the actual reasons. Now, right. another thing that people think is that it'll raise the value of your house, and it won't, honestly, because they require upkeep and maintenance. And like I say, it's not a net positive. They do so, require upkeep maintenance. If they're dirty, they're not as efficient. Yes. Right. Now, of course, that being said, an effective real estate agent could leverage it to the right client and you could get some more money potentially. But it's not like building a deck, for example. No, okay. no, not at all. So therefore, there really is one valid reason, and this is a very valid reason for solar panels in your home. Same for wind power, is a, an APU, an alternative power unit or APS, alternative power source. I agree. If you're looking for something that gives you a backup in case of power loss, mm -hmm. if you maybe have an electric car and your idea is you kind of want to degrid one object and that's kind of your goal, uh -huh. I could see that like from a hobby standpoint. Right. Um, if you were looking for an alternative power unit that will serve you in the event of an emergency, mm -hmm. wind and solar probably isn't the best way to go. I'm pretty sure that all the solar panels in Texas right now during the power outage aren't really that efficient because they're covered in snow. Right. Right. So it's one of those things where if you truly want to get off the grid because you want some type of independence, I can see why you would do that. But I think you're better off, you know, buying a $6,000 generator, plumbing it into the house and having it as an emergency backup system. Yes. And, and that is, of course, I got to give props. That's what old Pappy Sutherland has as his backup. And in that regard, um, he also, uh, I believe, was smart enough to get one that is um, dual fuel, the one that'll take both propane and gasoline. Because, right. yeah, gasoline doesn't keep on the shelves terribly long. No, what does is, honestly, if you want to do it right, um, our surgical center had a, a massive diesel generator. If you're mm -hmm. really looking at a generator that is going to last a long time and be reliable, uh, it was our diesel generator. We tested it once a month. It fired up without any issue. Uh, extremely expensive unit. But, I mean, if your yeah. goal is like, I would be off the grid in case, mm -hmm. case, case snow falls in Florida, then you probably should just get a generator. Yeah, we, we're yeah. talking... We're talking to you preppers who were coming after uh, last episode. Yeah, okay, be ready for emergency, but don't be ready for the end of the universe because that's going to be more complicated than you're planning for. Right. That being said, Sean, did we ever talk about how cool the Dendo home system that Mitsubishi set up for their plug-in hybrids is? No. Okay, so speaking of alternative things and and yeah. i just want to this is just innovative japan liked this so much they actually used it as part of their emergency planning for a little while until they found it that it just wasn't worth keeping in play going forward but a plug-in hybrid suv car whatever has the battery and it can run on the battery and in particular to the Mitsubishi model, it still has a gasoline engine that's really set up more to produce power. Think about like our diesel locomotives, right? right. Diesel locomotive has a, a diesel generator that powers electric uh, motors, right? Yes. Okay. Right. So when you buy one of these, at least in Japan, they haven't got this in the United States yet, but when you buy one of these in Japan, Mitsubishi will come and put a couple solar panels on your house and put a big battery on your house for you. Okay. Just like we were talking about a, a nice alternative power source, right? Right. The idea being you can charge your car off this battery, off the solar panels, and so much so that you can power your appliances off of that battery as well. So it's kind of nice. Yes. What made it really cool is that you can also power that battery from your car. It is system. Right. Yeah. You can run the car and charge the battery. It, it, a system that goes both ways. You can charge your car or charge your home with right. the car. Yes. I from, an, awesome. from an electrical standpoint, that is incredibly inefficient. N oh, yes. Getting an inverter in a vehicle yes. to run a refrigerator? Yes. That's... No. I mean, I'm sure it's, it's feasible. 
But right. yeah, you won't be able to run that fridge very long. There's a re there's a reason yeah. we don't use 12 volt DC in our homes. Right, yeah. and they actually have the the um, they have the 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 pronged plugins in the back of those SUVs too, which is really cool. But right, but they're they're watt limited. So yeah. I I think it's funny when people buy like a hundred watt inverter and they're like, well, I'm gonna run a <laughs> I'm gonna run my my portable refrigerator off it. No, you're not. No, I'm no sorry. That's not the way. Keep your beer cold. That's not the way electricity works. Sorry, kiddo. Okay, now in our notes, huh, you had a really fun one. Okay, I want you to get prepared for this, and I'm going to rant a little bit. Okay, um, what was this piece? Of, uh, I want you to, to to get ready ready for this cockroaches mating thing while I take a, a little bit of a rant. Okay. Oh my God, it's so weird. I love it. <laughs> So, so y'all are going to have to put up with my little rant while we talk, while we get ready for cockroaches mating habits. <laughs> okay, so I want to say a couple of things that are really true right now, because I believe strongly in the fact that two things can be true at once. Number one, go get a COVID vaccine, okay? Number one, that's true. You should get a COVID vaccine. Number two... Don't go crapping all over anyone who chooses not to. Both of those things can be true. The vaccine can be the best way for us to beat coronavirus. And we don't have to make this some sort of social martyrdom. And the reason that I'm saying this is because I have personally made the choice here in the Northwest. We have, we're not getting the supply of the vaccine like we should. Uh, you and everybody else, bud. It, right. Here in Clark County, there's five times the demand even for the 65 and older, the 50 plus in multi-generational homes, the emergency, the first responders, yeah. et cetera, I would, even with I all would, that. I would say it's the same here in Clark County. With two different Clark counties in two different states, that's crazy. So I have chosen, and, and I wanna say very clearly, some of some of you may be listening to this podcast thinking that I'm, I'm directing this at you. I'm not, okay? Uh, I've, I have gotten flack for a lot of people by choosing as a 40-year-old healthy male not to get the vaccine. You're 40? The, I am you're 40. younger than me. I always forget that you're actually older than me. I'm an old crotchety fart. You know, my other best friend does that a lot too. But the, to the point, Sean. You, you have way more energy than any 40-year-old should, yeah. In many unexpected ways. Ah. <laughs> But moving forward at the point, I, I have strictly chosen uh -huh. not to take that vaccine that could go to me from some person who actually needs it, okay? And as a rational human being who we try to be, I also understand that the only argument in favor of me getting the vaccine before some older person is I do interact with a lot of people who may be at risk and there is some threat of the asymptomatic, asymptomatic spread of coronavirus, right? Yeah. Right. Except for the fact that we have no solid data on that. None. Well, yeah, the, the thing is, we are still operating with this thing. Right. Lacking a lot of knowledge. So it's just best to act precautionary. Right. So again, I'm sitting here saying, get the vaccine if you can, right? But on the flip side, I'm also saying, I mean, I've seen studies that show, and, and I can put this link in the description if people want. I've seen studies that have shown that they've had to take their estimates all the way down to 17% on asymptomatic spread of coronavirus. So what we don't know is whether or not there is asymptomatic spread. We don't know that, okay? What we do know is that the 65-year-old lady with comorbidities needs that vaccine more than me. Yeah. I'm going to go with what I know, not what I don't know. Right. Rationale. Now, Sean. Yes. Tell me about cockroaches getting busy. This is kind of cool. They're called wood-feeding cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. You nice. terrible person. <laughs> Anyways, these little guys, they don't, they don't kill each other. It's not like a one-sided thing where, like, the female eats the male or vice versa. Uh -huh. 
-huh. when they mate, they mate for life. And by mating for life, they eat the wings of each other. Come because again? They're, they have wings. So what they do is they actually eat the wings off of each other. They destroy each other's wings. That is the most toxic relationship thing I've heard in some time. Well, that, that's even worse than, than my relationship with my ex-wife. So what they're believing is from an evolutionary standpoint. Uh -huh. Basically, what they're doing is they're locking each other into mating and creating offspring. Okay. Because by taking away their wings, essentially they're limiting their escape ability. So they, keep, they, have to be, they have to be more cautious. So in being more cautious, it makes them better at parenting, if you want to call it that. Okay. Because they are forced to find better shelter, find better food supply. It actually forces them to be more cautious. Because if you are raising young that cannot fly, and you can, you're probably okay. not going to make the best parenting decisions. Okay. <laughs> right? So... Uh, it's 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 kind of weird. They say it's rare, but uh, let's see here. Uh, could benefit the species in the long run without wings. They can no longer fly, which eliminates one of their best resources for escaping predators and finding food. With nowhere to go safely and limited options for scavenging, these two wingless lovers don't have options besides sticking together, making lots of babies, and raising their young together. So it is the cockroach equivalent of getting your spouse's name tattooed on your forehead and breaking their legs. Something, something, Stephen King misery. If you walked into a 7 Eleven at 3 a.m., one of these cockroaches would be working behind the counter. Just saying. With the name it, tattoo. It would, it would say, like, it would say, like, <laughs> I want to say Sandra, but it's too simple. Yeah, it would say <laughs> Sandra, and they would be on crutches, and they'd be like, Yeah, me and my wife took the plunge. We tattooed each other's names on our heads and broke each other's legs. So, um, but I, I thought it was kind of weird. If you're interested in reading more about this, it's Smithsonian Magazine. The cockroaches mate for life. Their secret mutual sexual cannibalism. Obviously, they threw the sexual in there to get everybody's attention. Right. Well, okay, but it's not unjustified because it's not cannibalism per se because they're hungry. It's literally sexual cannibalism in the idea of like... Like you they, say, you've roped that person into your bed with you. Right. It is it is the cockroach equivalent of how married couples just get fat together, and therefore it is harder for them to cheat because no one finds them attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yes. Bingo. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> Do not sacrifice your spouse's health Simply because you do not want them wandering around on you. Mm. That's not that's not okay. Waddling around on you. <laughs> it's okay. That's fair. Um, okay. Now, you and I also had a little bit of discussion about this because um I I I had a little bit of fun with a little bit of show and tell the last time, even though people got to see me in my terrible pants and fat body. I need to lose twenty pounds like yesterday. Um, yes, okay, we want people to download this as a podcast and listen to it. I will do my best to describe things that we show off. Okay. But yeah, there are some things that you're going to miss out on visually. <laughs> Just for the, the ten people who downloaded one episode, I'm sorry if you're missing out on this. Um, is, okay. Is that what our podcast download numbers are at? Like the actual podcast? I think episode one might be at like 12 downloads at this point. So we're killing it. Are you only? Are you still only on Google Podcasts, though? I have a life to live. Yeah, so we're not on Apple Podcasts or anything. I, I'm told Spotify is... Easy. I don't even use Google Podcasts. I, People I'm, use Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Okay, I'm not saying that you're wrong, Sean. I'm saying one thing at a time. Okay? Saying, if I spent as much time as we have on the last 11 episodes 
Uh huh. Throwing quarters at a slot machine. <laughs> More than ten of them would have gone in the slot. <laughs> Stop so, it! Can you we st- get people to download this damn thing? <laughs> okay, but to be fair, you are ridiculously good with thrown weapons, so mm. that's the only reason that that works. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Oh my god. Time my, the time me and my wife have spent throwing knives at things. <sighs> it's a little bit. It's a little bit inappropriate. Um, okay, now to get to the point. Uh, so one of my favorite podcasts, which I have been intentionally um, hiding the mug of this favorite podcast, but one of my favorite podcasts. Mm, the host will sometimes wear his shoulder holster in studio, which, okay, to be fair, is a little bit pandering. You don't really need it in studio. But I I chose to wear mine today because it is a celebration of our friendship. Um, And I'd like to make a point that the shoulder holster is kind of the push-up bra for men. It really is. Uh, It's like... I don't really have big shoulders or pecs. If you, tight, if you tighten it down, it, it pulls your shoulders back and it makes you stand straight, yes. You look all, mm, uh, yeah. and it's, that kind of makes me fun, but uh, makes me fun. What kind of, what is that? I'm sorry, that was, I, I picked No, up. I'm doing that too. Oh, wow, weird, yeah. I was, this pot, for you, our listeners. Just audio is, vomit, it's. It is, no, this, this podcast is constantly improving. I'm taking notes live for you our viewers slash listeners to get back to the point you made this shoulder holster for me right which is why you're wearing it you're not wearing it because you want to be a pro second amendment douchebag on camera you're wearing it because i made it for you although to be fair i am a pro second amendment douchebag fair enough but that's but that's not why i'm wearing it 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 is because I, I I did want to show off the really cool thing you made. That shoulder holder exists because, surprisingly, we couldn't find you anything. Thank you, Because yes. you bought a very rare firearm that nobody had, like, any interest in, and it was also way overpriced. Right. And I don't think there was anybody making anything for it. I don't think there's anybody making anything for it still. Correct. You can okay. So to to get to the point, so I I I have a love for things very unique. That's part of why I love my good friend Sean. Uh, yes, it's oh. my uniqueness that makes me special. Oh. yeah, I have a love for things which are very unique. This extends to my firearms, and I'm very particular about my carry concealed weapons. Specifically, I gained a love for revolvers with three inch barrels for a concealed weapon. Okay. Uh, Just in the performance of it, the three-inch barrel is like the smallest barrel you can have and still have decent performance at the range. Caliber dependent. Thank you. Always caliber dependent. Um, You know, the little one-and-a-half-inch, two-inch barrel snubbies, you know, I have one of those. It's a very easy conceal weapon because I can just throw it in a pocket and go. And you, yeah, I think you shot mine while you were out here, right? Right. Yeah, I think it was a Colt. No, Maybe. it's a, it is a ported one and three quarter barrel. I don't yeah. even think it's that. It is it is a ported snub nose revolver. Yeah, but that that pistol exists for only one pur- purpose, which is your concealed weapon. You don't yeah. take it to the range and have no. fun with it. Um, I don't I don't own a bunch of firearms. I don't collect a bunch of firearms, so I try to get something. No that things right. Same. Yeah. So. Um, I ended up, I was lucky enough to get my hands, and I'll show this to all the viewers here, on the Chiapa Rhino 3DS. If you are not familiar or listening to this uh, on audio, this this funny little revolver fires off of the bottom cylinder, which genuinely does reduce the recoil. Uh, you can go out, you can look at videos, and it, it really does reduce It does, the- because it lowers center line axis, yes. Exactly. And they, they did a bunch of other fun things with this as well. It accepts um, moon clips, for example, one of the few times it's valid to it use is, the word. It is a, yeah, it is a goofball striker-fired revolver. You know what it isn't, actually? It's it's weird. I had Right. Um, I had this thing at a gunsmith, and they had this opened up, and it is still 
hammer fired. This hammer does actually do its business, but it's like a Rube Goldberg machine. In yeah, one, one of one of the biggest issues with that gun is the fact that it is extremely overcomplicated for a revolver. Like that right. is my only issue with it. You've taken right. a simple concept and you're like complicated it. Yeah, let's 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 throw some more eggs and potatoes in that skillet. Like yeah. It's yeah, it's a pretty wild and to be fair, that's why this is what the second pardon me, it's my soda. This is the second revolver I think in firearm history that goes off of the bottom cylinder. I think the Mateba was the first one, which was also stupid because it was an it was an effort to make a semi-automatic bottom cylinder revolver. Not necessary. If I recall, yeah, no, it's really not. But Web Webley, Webley perfected that. We don't need to screw with it. Webley made a semi. Oh, was that the breaking hinge one? Uh, the wobbly Webley. Yeah, it cycled its action through a That's... track system that was on the cylinder. But so you buy this extremely expensive revolver. It wasn't that bad, but yeah, it, you can get a good three inch barrel revolver for like 600 and this was like 900. So let's call it 50% more expensive. Right. Yeah. And they drew a rhino on the box or printed one out and taped it to it. And then you got this thing. <laughs> Lo and behold, you couldn't carry it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody made. It, 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 right. Nobody made a holster for it. Right. <laughs> Which... I, if Kiapa has them in stock, you can order them from there. Kiapa rarely even has the gun in stock. Thank you. Like it's yeah. an Italian made imported gun. Right. Yeah. And they make fantastic stuff, but they did get a little bit wild on this one, and, and it is interesting. And it's totally worth finding. If, I don't know that I can necessarily recommend people go buy it because you have to have the taste for the weird that I do. Um, but if you if you know someone that has one, if you're hanging out with me or anyone of those that has one, ask them to put it in your hand at the range because it is unique. It really is. Yeah, they, they shoot weird. Like, it's not my cup of tea because I'm not big on overcomplicated stuff, but I was very impressed with it from, like, a mechanical and design standpoint. Right. Now, to get back to the point of the friendship, so you're a big problem solver, Sean. I try. I create a lot of them, so I've gotten really good at solving them. Who was it? Who was Shit. it that said that the expert is the one who made all the mistakes? I do not recall. I gotta look that up. I'll look that. I'll look that up. I gotta write that down, and I'll, I'll put that in the notes. Uh, made all mistakes. Uh, okay. That'll help. Okay, so so someone whose name is Sean. Oh, let me get the stupid thing off. Someone whose name is Sean had this damn. Um, shoulder holster laying around. Yeah, I had and... the leather part of it. Yeah, that took a lot of work, and I don't know why. It should have been very simple. So, for those of you who are um, listening to this, I have just indicated that the holster portion of this, the part that actually holds the firearm, is Kydex custom made by Sean, which is awesome. I I seriously think you need to do this for people again. Is just just have that go it's... on Etsy. There are so many people that do this at this point, and honestly, it's just, it's literally not worth the time it takes, at least for me. Mm -hmm. I, I'll now, do, I do one-off stuff for people for no pay, but yeah, there is no way. Like, if I would have had access to that gun a little longer and more Kydex, I would have knocked out six more of them and sold them, because no, as far as I could tell, nobody was making them when I made that one for you. Right. I should, I should let actually let you borrow a gun just for that but in conjunction with that so in fact the quality of this is high enough that you put a little lip in here that to go with the, the cylinder that's the retention for the gun yeah thank you yes this <laughs> there have been times when i've actually missed that a little bit like I, I i put it in and haven't pushed it real hard and <laughs> that sucker will just fall out but because of that that holds that in real well yeah yeah when i actually hit it right and then like the good man that you are, on the other yeah. side. Oh, yeah, I had to make Kydex to make that, huh? So, yeah, there is actually, and this is really cool, just explaining how cool things can be. So, yeah, there is a there is a, a Kydex kind of uh, a Y on here. So that this is, this is just one of the speed loader belt mm -hmm. pouches yeah. put on. 
I just think this is super creative. In all yeah, seriousness. This, this was a weird project for me because I had never done anything like that. And trying to figure out, like, it's very simple in, 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 in retrospect now. It's like a wipe shaped piece of kydex with a second uh -huh. piece on the back that sandwiches it yeah. but like when i was at my workbench trying to figure this gun and this system out i was like i have no i doing a shoulder holster is a pain in the butt because you have mm -hmm. to make sure that it's adjustable you have to make sure that the front and the back where the straps go in the weight is equally distributed so like i think the first mock-up one i did like the gun was just constantly hanging down because it wasn't carrying it high enough up at the top like it was, it was a very fun like couple of days of trying to solve this problem. I really Which, enjoyed it, and I'm glad you enjoyed it because I know that you're a problem solver. You love your projects. I it, do. It is, it's interesting to see people who like love projects because I'm just a person. I love learning things, but it isn't necessarily a project that does. It. Now, in related in relation to this, those of you who don't who haven't seen a moon clip before. Um, I'll describe it for you because it is kind of interesting. This one's a little bit screwed up because um, I used this one because I wanted to practice a little bit with it. Um, and so getting the bullets out of these, you need a special tool or it will bend them, period. Yes. So these look a little bit weird. But for those of you who can't see this, I'll put it up to the, the camera for those of you who can. But for those of you that can't see this, it is six bullets in basically what is a like aluminum ring. Maybe it's tin maybe um that holds all the bullets together it's different from a speed loader yes it, which is really funny because it's forcing a round peg into a square hole yes the whole idea behind it is and, and now i'll show our viewers this for the fun of it the whole idea behind this is that you have a revolver and you've been firing your revolver right so you you have your bullets in your revolver when your cylinder starts getting hot, right? And you hit your plunger to take them out. They don't all come out neatly and just fall out of a hot cylinder, right? Correct, which is why you, yeah. So, and I'm gonna have to pick this up off the floor now, and that's okay. So when you have instead a moon clip in your revolver, uh -huh. and you hit your plunger and they all come out together, yeah, that allows you just to yank it and put a new one in quicker. The idea right. is, Kiapa had this idea of creating a revolver more apropos for continuous use in combat. Right. Which is dumb. Which is a round peg yes, in a square Yes, that is completely... Hole. Yes. It's, hey, you know what? Teach their own. To but... each their own. So Do I it, like... Yeah. I mean, Do it's... I love this firearm? Yeah. But... Yeah. But once again, to make the moon clips work, they had to like redesign the cylinder and to redesign the spacing between the striker. Just, uh, no. Right. And, no. and like, you can... like, I was always taught like a revolver is a $300 piece of equipment that you fire six times and then throw on the ground. Like, <laughs> I, and that's, yes, that's fair. That's totally like, you don't fair. reload it, you just grab your other eight revolvers that you have in your jacket. <laughs> like, it's right. boondock saints. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that's our little show and tell. And hopefully, uh, whatever you, whatever anyone thinks about that, uh, comment, share, whatever. If you guys want us to do more show and tell like that, we will. And we'll do our best to describe it for our audio listeners. If you are an audio listener and you're actually pissed off that we're doing that right now, I'm sorry. I'll do better describing for the next time. But you're going to have to let us know if we are to know. Yeah, I mean, I could run upstairs and get like 45. I mean, not right now. No. Although, again, because we care about you, our audience, I'd like to emphasize that Sean has gone pee pee before we started to make sure that he is not <laughs> urinarily crippled during our podcasts. I already have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We're going to take a brief intermission. You can, no, I'm kidding. No, you got to hold that. That's good for your prostate. I'm trying. According to this, I have like 21 minutes. Oh, it'll, yeah. Well, I tell you what, you've got your bottle there, don't you? I do. I actually thought about doing that like two podcasts ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. 
incidentally, my drive down to you to get this very shoulder holster was the first time that I learned. And this is anyone who listen who's listening to this, this is advice for life. Do not try to pee in a bottle during a road trip unless you have practiced it first. Okay, so the first time. Oh, we're gonna get deep. The <laughs> first time I tried to do this, yes, I was like 16. <laughs> and and here's what had happened. I had simultaneously like snapped my ankle, so I was on crutches. Uh-huh. At the same time, I was living in an RV because my parents were like, I can't remember what they were doing to the house. They were they were knocking out a wall to extend a thing to make room for a quilting machine because I don't know. Life was weird back then. <laughs> so I'm living in an RV. I'm on crutches. If I want to pee, I have to get down the stairs of an RV, go through gravel on crutches, unlock the door to the house. So my solution is, mm-hmm. and keep in mind, I don't want to pee in this RV because then I have to like drive the RV down and dump the tank. So right. this is... I, not happen. Right. I'm going to pee in a bottle. And I have never done this before. And I'm 16. The concept of differential pressure made no sense to me. Okay. <laughs> I, I knew pressure would increase in a confined space when adding a liquid. I knew that. Have you ever, did you ever as a kid do the thing where you put like baking soda and water in a bottle and put a cork in it, you wrap it in like toilet paper and you shake it up and then as the toilet paper erodes, it like pops the cork off? I mean, I've popped things off. I haven't used the toilet paper though. Okay. Oh God, I, the fact that I'm sharing this. Imagine, <laughs> imagine the tip of your pee-pee is a cork. Okay. okay. And, you, and you seal it. <laughs> it's show and tell time. And you seal the tip of your pee-pee against the inside of a bottle, and then you try to pee. The result is the increasing pressure immediately blows your tip of the pee-pee out of the bottle. You now have a stream of pee that is uncontrollable. Yes. All over the floor of an RV. Yes. Peeing in a bottle either takes one practice because you got to leave an air gap, or two, uh-huh. a wide mouth bottle. And and even and I am here to tell you, if you're dry, don't do this. Okay, even if you had practice, don't do. I can't really endorse my behavior. I will confess to it, but I can't endorse my behavior. Do not try to keep control of a vehicle going 80 miles an hour while simultaneously trying to operate your male equipment (laughs) and land your urine in a bottle. Yeah, most people can't drive and talk on the phone even, like, wirelessly. Don't try to do this. Don't. Don't. Pull over. Just pull over. And I am here to say, by the way, on that note... Because I will be damned if Highway (laughs) Patrol shows up to my Jeep upside down (laughs) <laughs> melt it into my chair and my pants are around my ankles <laughs> yeah my wiener is yeah. stuck in a mountain dew bottle <laughs> that's gonna be I, I do not want them making that call to my wife like we found your husband dead here's what happened <laughs> it's slightly less embarrassing i do not want to be found dead upside down in my car mid coitus doing the do just say <laughs> no <laughs> no, which which is worse, that or your browser history after death? Um, honestly, my browser history is pretty lame, so it would definitely be found <laughs> found half naked inside a Mountain Dew bottle. Now, to those of you who haven't done it before, by the way, the road trip from the road what is that ninety and ninety three out in the west that gets from the northwest to Nevada? Um. We're surrounded by a bunch of states with trees, and then you mm-hmm. drive out of the states with trees, and then you drive into a giant dirt area. And it's there's the like, wasteland. There's like four freeways, and there's yeah. like US 95, the US 93, and the I 15 are the main ones. Okay, okay. So that basic route. I think you route, took the 93 in. 
I, and, and I think you're right. Okay, in all seriousness, that route is a beautiful drive, even though it is clearly a wasteland. Um, it is beautiful in that regard. And I'm here to say that because I had to pee so bad during that drive, I did actually stop in the middle of the night on the side of the road and go pee on a clear night in the middle of the Nevada wasteland. You just look up. Oh, That's yeah. Absolutely. If you get about. You go to the, the, the Paiute Reservation out in Malapa when we went shooting. That's. Yeah. Remember, I said we have to go off to the right because to the uh -huh. left is reservation. If you go about 10 minutes further up the road than we were at night and you just look up, oh my God. Like, it there's no delicious. light pollution. And mm -hmm. you really do see more than you do in like Oregon or Washington. Mm hmm. Yeah. My, my first experience with how amazing that is, and it, I can't express it because you can see the Milky Way clearly. Right, thank you. Yeah. So back in 97, I, I got to go to Australia as a, a student ambassador. It was a fancy, like, government-sponsored vacation trip. It, it, but one of the things we did is we went out in the outback on, a, like, an 80,000-acre ranch because no one's competing for that wasteland either. And we went out... Quigley. Yeah. Uh, Quigley. Quigley. <laughs> We in the middle of nowhere. We went out in the middle of the night, and it was exactly as you were saying. If you go, you know, you you crack open your middle grade, your middle school textbook on astronomy, and they've got the picture of the Milky Way galaxy. Trying to describe actually seeing that picture in reality is impossible. Yeah, no, you you can't. It's it is amazing to be surrounded by it. We've been. We went out camping a couple times in the middle of the desert, mm -hmm. which is miserable because heat is not retained in the desert. It's cold. Um, yeah, it gets really cold. But my God, you look up and it's just gorgeous. And we did the, the same kind of thing out in Umatilla, too. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, I don't think the sky was as clear in Umatilla. Yeah, because we slept outside the tent. Yeah, that was awesome. Because the tent stank and so did the people inside of it. I didn't, I didn't tell you, by the way, that that's the critical problem with our new um, field hospital and field surgical trucks, right? Did I tell you about that? Is the, are the hospitals also PPV? So, yes. It's all supposed to be modular now, with the exception that... So, the field hospitals will be temporary fixed facilities wherever possible. But if not, we can use these PPVs, Right. Right. So our FRSD, they are now field resuscitative surgical detachments. Our oh FR, uh, thank you. Yes, that's the correct reaction. Our FRSD is designed to be a 20-man team with two trucks. One for the hospital quotation. I'm just saying hospital for something people can understand. One for the hospital portion and one for the, all the equipment, right? It's a 20-man team. Those two trucks have 19 seats. Someone's hanging on to the front. I don't I'm know. assuming you're just strapping them onto the side. That's yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then, as fun as it, as it was getting those the the tent up, this is that's what we were doing this this last drill. We were all standing around like just smiling at each other and how fancy this thing. Oh look, we have this thing and it's beautiful. And we did this ourselves. And then we go. Where are we supposed to sleep? Right, because they didn't provide you with that, right? <laughs> the t right, the tent is for treating patients. Right, they literally <laughs> gave you the hospital portion. They didn't give I... you a deep head. Let me just explain. If you're listening anywhere in the middle, military, or in medical, actually, I should say that. Seaburn, which is chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear, uh -huh. is handled by what they call different MOPs, or Mission-Oriented Protective Protocol. We'll go with that. I don't remember Okay, the sorry, thing. that's you close. Be, yeah. yeah. Um, there are Posture, tents, it's posture. Posture, me. thank you. There we go. Gosh, yeah. So there are tents that they call PPV tents, which are positive pressure ventilation tents. Essentially... Um, you inflate the tent at one end through a filtered system that can mm -hmm. do chemicals, radiation, nuclear, bio, whatever. It works. And then that inflation 
helps keep the tent up and also keeps bad air out. Mm -hmm. There are two side effects to this. One is um, only one person can go in at a time through a sealed set of doors. It's Correct. really a pain in the ass. <laughs> yes. You can't leave the door open for fresh air. There's no such thing. Correct. Uh, two is it takes a lot of power to keep one of these things inflated. You can't inflate like an entire circus tent with this. You get a very small workable area. Oh, and, and right. Okay. So first off, so yes. Okay. <laughs> The two, there are two gigantic generators. There's the redundancy to be able to pump those, which is also hilarious because I'm, we're joking that these are like three million dollar pieces of equipment, right. and they, they don't reverse. They pump in, but heaven help you if you need to get out of that location fast. Right, because they will not deflate the tent. They in the three million dollar tent. They haven't done what an air mattress can do, which is power inflate and power deflate itself by twisting the knob. We, you, they <laughs> you were... basically have to turn it off and watch it sadly deflate like one of those Christmas Santas on January 1st. Well, no, and I'm here to tell you, you have taxpayer dollars being spent on soldiers jumping on this thing like a damn yes. bounce house. Yeah, because you're trying Chuck to deflate geez. it to get the air out of it. You're taking a pole and you're squeezing it from one end to the other like a giant roll of toothpaste. Right. Thank you. <laughs> which is which was hilarious, too, because you do have to put your damn back into rolling these things up. Oh, they're heavy. And the person doing the briefing is like, okay, we need someone strong on this end to help roll it up. And I, I, I was in the twilight zone when like four soldiers looked at me. Right. I'm also, like, yeah, I'm a buck 70. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, and then the problem with, they provided you with this equipment, but you got to like take a Coleman tent or a third vehicle with you. Cause one, you can't fit the 20th person on. And second, you still have to take temper with you. Like, for a place to sleep it, if yes if you and so obviously you know uh, of course we we talk about this being very high speed ghosting things and blah 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 if i actually do end up being deployed and i have to sleep i will i will bring a little pup tent just uh, bring a pup tent right just. and that being said where the hell do you do personal hygiene as well i'll bring one of those little stand-up showers i really will because i hate yeah. being sticky from what i've found when we would did field work it was like worth it to pack like the extra 20 pounds mm -hmm. of like a small tent didn't we take a small tent to umatilla that we could like change in and stuff as i don't know that it was umatilla but i believe yes yeah we've because, done that before because when you don't have that ability you can do it in a tent and if yeah. and if you're comfortable with it you can absolutely strip yourself buck naked and spend 15 minutes wiping yourself with baby wipes. But honestly, I don't want to do it. I don't want to watch you do it. So having that like $40 Coleman tent with you is very uh -huh. helpful. It, it is not just a luxury. It is a courtesy to your fellow soldiers. Yeah, I don't want to see you scrubbing nuggets. I really don't. <laughs> I, now, I don't. Okay, to this point. All right. The other funny thing that I was thinking about and I want to share this wonderful anecdote uh, about one of the times that, that you and I were serving together. So um, I had I had the, the advantage and simultaneously disadvantage of being single a lot of the time that you and I served together, right? Uh, yeah, well, like half of it. The, yeah. Which, yeah. like in Bosnia, for example, we'll have to bring up the time that you tried to hook me up with the the shoe sales girl that was funny didn't, but didn't we'll do well we'll do that we'll talk about that later yeah. for now we okay so what's really cool about the caches and i don't know what will be going on with the the field hospitals now but of course the or was a giant steel box right you remember that yes right and, and it's designed as i was leaving i think they were shipping it back to uh j blam joint they, base they, lewis mccord right they might have been wrapping up with it. So yeah. the, the great thing about that is we go through all sorts of drills in the hospitals for taking fire, indirect fire, sea burning, and so forth. And the protocols in the OR is, okay, whose turn is it on UNO? Because you just sit there. 
If you're taking fire and you're in the OR, you sit there. If right. it's a C Bernie and you're in the OR, you sit there. Because you can't it's a, go out. Right. It is also not a solid object. There's no place to take cover. Okay. The OR it is because it's a big steel box, but the rest of the hospital oh, the is OR. not. Yes. Yeah. Right. I was thinking about the inflatable tent. Yeah. So I don't know if you recall, but um, I come out of the OR after like trying to get with one of the female soldiers there. I'll admit it. I was like racking. When was and this? It, it was down in Hunter Liggett, I reckon. Hunter Liggett. When we were... Oh, that's the one we were hanging out with Sniper Bait and her boyfriend, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, okay. So, I come out and everyone is in a defensive posture. Helmets on, oh, God. rifles. This yeah, you remember trip. this. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. It was yeah. a great trip. And so I'm walking through, and I'm kind of being a douche about it because I'm like, oh, okay, we're doing something. I didn't know because I was in the OR, and I was doing my protocol. So I'm walking by, and I see you doing the right thing. There's this, this T hallway, and you have your body and then your rifle and head sitting around the corner looking down the hallway. Okay, that was 100% correct. Right. And I, I'm basically headed in there to get my helmet and rifle. I'm not being a complete douche. I'm just not in a hurry. And so I go, I go around that corner. I'm like, hey, Kia Hill. And you're like, hey, Sutherland. And I go around the corner. And there is a nurse yeah. holding security on your calf. Yes. There was, <laughs> there was a nurse <laughs> flagging the sh out of my lower half. <laughs> also, across <laughs> the hallway in, because I was in EMT. That, no, That was the ICW, I think. Right. Across the hallway in ICU, there was a sergeant at the end of the ICU hall pointing his rifle at my head. Directly at you. And I kept looking at him going, who are you going to shoot? And he's like, well, somebody walks past the doorway, I'm going to shoot him. I was like, you, you're going to shoot me. We're, you're going to shoot right. all the people in the opposite, which is what the, oh, what are they called? Instructor, trainer... What are they called? Oh, yeah, I don't remember. But but the people grading us. or something. Yeah, they were yeah, like, right. hey, that was really stupid, guys. <laughs> yeah, and I ended up correcting the the, the uh, nurse who was sitting there. I was like, um, so, uh, sir or ma'am, I don't even remember. Um, if you pull your trigger, where does your bullet go? And they were like, oh, okay. And then they yeah. readjusted. Yeah. Um, now, you should know that approximately 8% of the military is actually combat trained. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Now, to that point, okay, like you say, in the hospital as a whole, and this is, this is universal. This has been true ever since we built hospitals. They've been canvas, leather, plastic, whatever. You don't have cover. You have concealment. Right. Anything that hits those, you're doomed, right? Exactly. And we've understood that. But... <laughs> but they're also head up with metal tresses, right? Those were a pain to put up. You remember those, right? Now they're inflatable tubes, right? Thank you. Yeah. I'm looking at this thing, and yeah. I'm like, I hope those things are self-sealing. They are not. <laughs> they are not. Because you can be low to the ground and avoid getting hit, but that thing fills up with bullet holes. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> yeah, it's going to deflate like like a zeppelin like <laughs> do you remember that scene in unbreakable when bruce willis's character was almost killed by falling in the pool yeah that's us <laughs> yeah you're gonna you're gonna Just... be drowning in <laughs> plastic covered canvas no i mean like i get it they, they make sense from a standpoint of like they're easy to like transport and move and in fairness they're not meant for frontline work no no but, but yeah i mean <laughs> in a in a 360 battlefield <laughs> it's it's amazing it's made for the military but a small child with a pellet gun <laughs> could <laughs> absolutely wreck it will like, absolutely ruin it so okay oh my god so we're we're coming up on end of time here um so i i would uh i would like to let our friend sean get a chance to go and pee oh yeah uh, <laughs> maybe i'm just bringing it up again to make the pain more acute that's nah, not bad. Pon your ureter.
So, anyway, to those of you who have listened to this point, I'd like to thank you again for sticking all the way through. I'd like to remind everyone, because this came up in one of my courses, that honestly, we are going to have a lot more love for each other as human beings if we build on our commonalities, not our differences. Yes. You meet someone you're not sure about, ask them about their family, talk to them about find out about their life but don't don't do that thing of being like oh what are your struggles that i need to adjust my viewpoint for just love that person for that person absolutely and so with that being said sean always a pleasure have yourself an awesome night you too enjoy your afternoon <laughs> hanging up so you can pee <laughs> okay thank you bye <laughs>